Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Ark Survival Evolved with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to Herbivore Island, which currently is actually home to more carnivores than it is herbivores, at least in the tamed population, both in headcount and in different species. So, to fix that, I've decided let's go ahead and tame even more carnivores. For a start, I am taming this poor little Tranodon, which I, ac which I actually accidentally shot down with the crossbow. I fired at it, expecting to hit it at least once, and it went straight down, so I kind of forgot how effective the crossbow actually is, but mostly, as the title may suggest, we are going hunting for the elusive anglerfish. Now those are located in the very deepest recesses of the Ark Trench, which is located on the very east and kind of northern northeastern border of the map. So that's what we'll be hunting today, and there is a very good reason to do so. Number one, they are really, really creepy looking, meaning that they make excellent and very weird mounts. Along with actually being um, luminescent, obviously, so you can actually see better underwater. But secondly, hunting them actually yields a very interesting resource. The bioluminescent material that makes up their little um, angler, I suppose, their little, I don't know what it's called, the stalk on the front of their head, is actually obtainable. And you can burn it in campfires and such, and it is the longest burning fuel resource in the game. And if you use it on a standing torch, it actually causes the torch to burn a luminescent blue, as opposed to the regular orangey red flame. So I'm going to go ahead and allow this guy to be tamed, and we'll be right back on Moss searching the trench for our new prey. One Pteranodon tamed, now it's time to tame the elusive fish. Okay, so let's put on our scuba gear, which I'm so thankful you can actually repair without knowing the engram for. There we go, on moss, and let's get started, if these ones will actually leave us alone. I swear, the dolphins have a bit of a death wish. So, we need to go towards the... Oh, of course, you can't check the map, can you? Well, I can assume we need to go towards this direction, so hopefully we'll find one soon. The deeper you are, apparently, the more likely you are to encounter them. Which makes complete sense, as, well, in the wild, they are just that. Even if the ones in Ark are ridiculously huge, which it even admits isn't natural. So, yeah, I'm assuming somewhere like this section down here, if we, if we can actually get past, which we can... Durden. Durden, Durden. I know sharks are scary, but if this thing was coming towards you, I think it would be even a little bit more, well, frightening. So I assume then what we'll do is just head towards Carnivore Island and hopefully we'll run into one before then. Oh, what are you? You are a floating coal vein. Well, not even kidding. I thought perhaps the area around it simply hadn't loaded yet, but nope, I just went straight past it. It's literally a floating coal vein. Okay then. Not quite what I'm after, but oh hello please you saw. I will be eating you both, I'm sorry, but I do need the experience for my lovely little moss here. Also, look at all that lovely prime meat. Probably going to go rotten before we actually find one of the darn things, but still, still pretty darn nice. A bit more melee damage because why not become even more beastly? Now, either my eyes deceive me, or that little blue glow, yes indeed, we have a female anglerfish level 12. Excellent. Okay, now I do know for a fact that these things do a ridiculous amount of damage. However, they are quite frail, so we still have to be a little bit careful as not to overly damage this thing. Okay, let's get a little bit closer. Now, Moss is impassive, so... Oh, hello, I don't really want you, I want the blue one. Oh, level 40, I'm sorry, but you are now dead. Whoa, that is a lot of angular gel. So that's the stuff we can burn. Excellent. Come on. Why can't you... Okay, we just hit it. We did hit it, okay, so it's got one trank dart. Sorry, one trank arrow already in it. And is it running away? Okay, well, apparently it's running away. Did not know they did that. Maybe they're like piranhas, if they take too much damage, they just run. Wait, no, wait, do piranhas do that? You know, now I've said that, I don't think piranhas... Okay, there's another one here, a yellow one. Once again, don't really care, I want the blue one, because the blue one is cool. 
They drop a lot of stuff. Hello. Let's try and tank tank with moss if possible. Three hits. Can we get fourth? Oh, hello! You're turning back around. This one seems really docile compared to the others. Is it going for moss? I think it was. I'm okay with this. It's a lot of hits. And apparently now I'm also freezing to death, which isn't helping. Oh, hello. Bad things abound. Bad, shiny things abound. Mars, get closer to me. Yes, there we go. And he is asleep. Or she, rather. Was it she? I can't remember now. Let's go over to it anyway. That wasn't too bad. But not very quick. That's what I did notice. Do I, do I have any prime meat left? I do. Oh, I have loads of prime meat left. That's fantastic. We have been killing things. Thankfully. A plesiosaur actually did a load of damage to Moss. Turns out it was like a level 100 and something, which was kind of sad. Didn't I just transfer it all? Am I going mad? Did it all rot? I don't know what, okay, I don't know what I've just done wrong there, but obviously I did something wrong. Still freezing to death, so I'll have to go to the surface soon, which is kind of sad. Let's go for the more fresh meat, shall we? Now, I know I know, I only have a very brief amount of time to actually get over to here. As soon as I have prime meat somewhere else in my inventory, of course. No, it must have rotted, okay. Here's some narcotics, let's use that straight away. You have loads of torpor. Yeah, I mean, health to torpor ratio is a little bit poor, I guess. It had all the same warnings like the um, the penguin, essentially. Be really careful about it because you can easily kill it by mistake. And although it does seem like that's true, it doesn't seem as bad as the penguins. I mean, the penguins had like 200 health for 800 torpor. This one has 1,400 for 800 health, so it's not too bad. Here you go, here's some hide as well. You can eat that. Uh, I've got a feeling like a shark's going to try and kill this though if I leave it for too long. Okay, we'll only leave once our health actually gets quite low. Until then, we'll try and stay and defend. What's that in the distance? Is that just like the sun rising or something? Ooh. Okay, that's helpful. Here, I'm not freezing. Okay, well, I know what I'm doing then. Just staying about this distance. And hopefully no evildoers will try and kill the poor fishy. Apparently you eat incredibly slowly. Oh wow, yeah, you do eat incredibly slowly. Saying that though, you are still making room for a prime meat. Come on, I just want, I just want to see how much timing you get for one prime meat. I want to see how hard you are to time. Because if you're not very difficult, I'll probably have a, like, a whole shoal of you since, well, you're a tiny little fish. Well, not not saying tiny, but in comparison to the other sea creatures, you are pretty darn small. Comparatively tiny. Wow. Where's the oh, there's the eyes. Soulless grey eyes. Wow, that's really creepy. There's the gel. For the bioluminescence. I think it's 50 food you need, isn't it? for it to eat one prime meat. Seems to be getting colder at the moment. Well, that makes sense. I think we're getting further in, into, the, into the night. Wow, that was a load of food you just ate. Okay, well then, this shouldn't take too long at all. So I'm going to head off to the surface, try and defend as, as best I can, and we'll be right back. Also, these things apparently give a lot of experience, which is very, very good indeed. And there we go, we have the anglerfish. Exploring the depths of the ocean can be difficult. The cold, the lack of air, and the shocking absence of light combine to make travel very dangerous. A tamed anglerfish can use the natural light at the end of its stalks to illuminate the depths, making exploration not only safer, but more lucrative. Furthermore, then it talks about how you can, you know, cut off its thing and stuff. Yes, it does. Excellent. I thought I was going mad then. So, there we are. It's apparently aggressive to small fry, otherwise skittish. I disagree with that, as it has tried to kill Moss. At least one of them tried to kill Moss. Now, where is it? There we are. Hello! Oh, look at your cute little doodle bobber. Could we just get... Yes, we can. Excellent. No saddle required on this thing. Does it do anything special with um, right-click? Sadly not. That's not too slow when it actually gets moving. 
Sadly, you can't see properly with the um, scuba mask because how big the um, thing is, the overlay. Actually, if you're zoomed out, you actually see no difference, so... I, I really don't like how the scuba mask is shown, honestly. It's just, it blocks so much of your vision. Oh. There we are. Uh, yeah, it's definitely providing some light. I guess right now, since it's the middle of the day, because it actually took quite a while to time this thing, it's not really adding too much of an effect. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take Moss back home, and then we're going to go hunting with this thing, and seeing just how well it can actually do. By the looks of it, in terms of damage, this thing is ridiculously good. In terms of everything else, I'm not so sure. However, the stamina looks pretty darn good. Still sprinting, still sprinting, no major issues yet at all. Although, it's nowhere near as fast as Moss, because, well, look at the size difference. It's definitely got the creepy factor going on. And we got a lovely blue one as well, so yay for style points. Well, before we get hunting, I think it's only fair we test out the new gel we've just acquired. Both in terms of turning the standing torches blue, but also in terms of, well, seeing if the, it can actually be cooked with. I imagine it can, as it'd be really weird if the same item burning wouldn't be able to cook something, so... I doubt it won't be able to, but testing is always required. Standing torch, use. And then we also have, of course, the ever-valuable campfire. Then all the gel, of course, is currently on Moss. Aw, oh, poor Moss is still hurt. I'll be taking that, thank you. Ooh, excellent. It's also not very heavy, which is a good boon, considering how heavy wood can be and such. Um... Hmm. You know, that looks... That looks a little bit glitched, honestly. I guess the idea is... Of course, it's not actually burning, though, is it? It's just... It's just been placed there. Because it glows. Maybe you can't cook with this thing. No, I mean, you can burn it in the thick... Well, I guess then the concept is you can burn it in the campfire if you actually need heat. However, in the torch, you're just placing it. Is that really how it's going to be? There's me thinking it would be something like, I don't know, a, an actual blue flame, not just placing the gel on the stick. In which case, I suppose it's just running out of its light? But on the upside, this thing doesn't have a, a timer in terms of it rotting away, which I thought it may have, considering the recent organic polymer. So let's go ahead and let's see how many cooked meat we can get in, before this angular gel goes down to 98. Well, rather than waiting around until the gel is finally used, I think it's about time we go ahead and begin the great hunt with our new pet. I looked it up and it turns out the gel lasts a grand total of four minutes when used in the campfire and significantly longer when used in a regular torch. I will be back later to see just how this looks in the dark, but for now, we go hunting. Come on, my pet. Okay, Moss, you're not following me. Excellent, and let's go. Now, one thing I did neglect to mention is that it does seem to have one major bonus to actually use this thing as a mount, and that's just how agile the thing is. It turns in seconds, whereas most things turn significantly slower. So this is actually really easy to use in comparison. Well, anyway, here we are back underwater. What I'm looking for this time is a shark. And no, I won't be using the scuba mask because, well, I'm absolutely sick of it now. But I just wanted to see how fast this thing actually kills a shark. Afterwards, I will look up the actual base damage of this and compare it with, with other creatures. Now, base damage is a little bit misleading sometimes because it also depends on the speed of attack of your creatures. This one seems to attack not very quickly, honestly, so even if it does have a high base damage, that might not necessarily say that it's got a high damage per second. Well, we're pretty much alone right now. Let's see if we can find something soon. Well, not quite our target, but it's the first thing that seems to be angry at us. Hello, fellow anglerfish! They do run away really quickly. I don't think it's based on how much damage they've took, I think it's just how much damage, like, if they have taken damage or not. Also, is that like pure black? That looks remarkably creepy. That did take a while. Oh, hello, another one. 
Yeah, once again, as soon as I hit it, it simply runs away. Well, that also means then they make absolutely easy prey, because even a weak creature could kill them, as long as you can keep up, and they're not particularly fast. Oh, no, he's fighting again now. No, and there he goes, absolutely killed. And we get all that lovely gel. That's absolutely fantastic, though. The fact this can be used to cook, and I assume smelt as well, this probably makes one of, one of the best resources to actually use for that, especially since how long it lasts, being the big bonus. Also, has a surprisingly high weight capacity, which I only just now noticed. Uh, let's increase melee damage and then health. But also, seriously, these things give so much experience, it's ridiculous for such easy targets. Still want to find a shark, though, because sharks are one of these things I've killed so many times, I can kind of use as a base to see how much damage we're really doing. The bioluminescence of the fish is finally being shown off now that it's, well, about midnight, and it looks really cool. I don't know how much it's really helping me, because I can see pretty much anything anyway, and this is on the standard gamma, but even so, I do love the effect. Perhaps if you were hunting for the trilobites that make this area home, then, well, this is probably your kind of fish, but don't really see much use for it, but just love the effect nonetheless. Oh, hello, there's one. Saying that, I would have missed these if it didn't shine on them, so perhaps there is some use. Just less so for things like the pearls and such. Also, these things take too many hits. Even moss can't kill these in one shot. Also, still no sharks yet, which is kind of surprising. Perhaps I'm just a, li a little bit too low down. Back to the surface we go. Well, there we have it. We found ourselves a shark. Let's see how well the giant fish does versus it. Okay, we're just going to do a straight up fight here, no trying to kite around it, because ultimately I think that this fish would be agile enough to actually stay behind the shark the entire fight. However, it didn't seem to need it. That was a pretty one-sided fight. We lost just under 300 health just under, and the shark, well, lost its life, and it was level 28, we were level 22. So well done to the fish. Still very frail though, although saying that we are constantly upping the melee damage, which does seem to go up in huge amounts of percent. It's definitely over 20%, I haven't really been keeping track, so I should have been looking at that really, since the levels do differ per animal. Or at least I think they do. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But either way, the fish seems to be really agile, good at carrying a little bit of weight, fairly fast at over long distances, and has a really ridiculously nasty bite. So, overall, really happy with it. I also love how it puts the lure in its mouth just before it bites. That's so awesomely creepy. Come on, little fish, go into the lure. I kind of wish that the lore maybe like attracted the coal or something, that would be fantastic. Imagine all the little fish kind of slowly coming towards the angler just before bite, and there they all go. Is that another shark? I would say that I would say that's a second shark. Excellent, we get to test that once again. Hopefully not a ridiculously high level, since we are out of stamina to run away. They're saying that with how, sh with how slow the sharks are in this game. Okay, level 40. It'll take a bit longer this time. And there it goes. Well done once again to the fish. And yet another level. Excellent. Even more melee damage. Yeah, it's about 20% then. Wait, 5, 6... It's about 30% rather. Cool. Back on the island. And before we go ahead and look at the glowing torch over there in the full darkness of night, I went ahead and looked up the base stats of the fish on the wiki page. And it turns out it's actually really good. The melee damage, base damage is 20, which on the face of it doesn't look too impressive. However, since it has one of the fastest growth rates in terms of percentage I have seen of any animal on Ark, this means that per level with this particular level of fish, it's gaining 6 damage per player level, which 
again, doesn't sound amazing on the face of it, but means after 10 levels, this thing is going to do more damage than a Rex, because a Rex at the moment does 60 damage according to the wiki, although I still believe that's 80 with a recent patch note, although that may have been re revoked, I don't know. Doesn't really matter, all it shows is that the fish here is ridiculously strong. Even at the moment, that means this fish is doing almost 100 damage per bite, which is just insane! So actually, these fish may be one of the strongest creatures in Ark, purely because of how fast the damage ramps up as it levels. Not the best buy stats, but really impressive leveled up stats. Now, it's never going to beat a certain ridiculously huge carnival over there, but it's still going to be pretty darn good. Okay, so before it gets time for daybreak, let's have a quick look at the torch. Now, I'm not overly keen on the flashing effect. I will say that. That does make my eyes feel a little bit funny when looking at it. I Right now, I'm actually not looking at the screen. Something about that just doesn't work for me. Really don't like it. However, it is very effective. It's only used up a couple of gel this whole time. And as you can see, look how much light it's actually producing. You can have so many of these on for so long. And you seem to get so much gel as well per kill. With the fish also not being a particularly hard thing to kill, that's really good. Even the campfire that was burning the entire time, it turns out cooked all of the food and still had this many left. It's just... Really, really impressive. Now, I think the gel is about four minutes in the campfire. I'm not quite sure about the torch. Maybe I'll just go and look that up really quickly before we finish. Wow. I've just looked it up on the wiki, and the gel is even better than I expected. In the campfire, I was correct, it is exactly four minutes worth of burning time, which, again, is really, really good and makes it easily the best fuel currently in Ark, as long as you don't mind farming the stuff, because, of course, it's at the very bottom of the ocean. But in a standing torch, it lasts over one hour. Of course, one hour real time, not in-game time. Meaning these torches could burn with a full stack for several real-life days. That's insane. So I'm really happy with the torches. Even if the, the glow effect isn't really to my liking, it would make a really good alternative to the electric lighting, and I will probably be using it in the future if I ever start building a camp somewhere. So in conclusion, the gel is definitely worth the effort, and the fish itself is ridiculously good. The damage is insane, and the health is low, but it turns on a dime, it can carry a decent bit of weight, and it ramps up faster than most animals I know of, so overall, really good animal. And with that, before my throat completely gives up on me, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Ark Survival Evolved is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. That is the face you see after waking up from a nightmare.